So in the first half of this year, this, of course, is companies continue to position themselves for what we all hope is a post-COVID world. Joining us now is Mark Schaefer. He's Citigroup's co-head of Global M&A. First of all, great to have you and nice to have you in person again, Mark. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, and Thank I want to get to actually Citi's plan for bringing people back as well. But let's talk M&A as we have for many years now and get your take on things. I mean, it has been a very strong market, to say the least. Can it keep going? Oh, look, I mean, the, it's kind of hard to fight the tape at this point, right? I mean, record volumes in the first half. North America's driving it. The nine industry groups we cover are all up substantially over 20, which is not that surprising, but very good comparisons to 19. Cross-border levels are up. Financial sponsor volumes are at records levels. So this is a very, very strong market. We were worried in the middle of February, the dependence on a SPAC market. That's only 13% of first half volume. So the traditional M&A market has rebounded substantially. It has, yeah, because obviously SPACs, you know, they shouldn't even be counted as far as I'm concerned. They sort of are a different animal. Um, but I know you as a guy who's always sort of worried, uh, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but what concerns you now, Mark? Because you typically through the years have been always a little bit concerned. It's not going to be as good as it has been. It, I, I, look, I'd say the fine. We, we went back and took a look, um, comparisons to 2007. We looked at nine factors, which, you know, in, in my mind was really the previous peak. Six of them we are at or exceeding. Volume levels, sponsor volumes, the VIX is about, you know, slightly better. We're inversely correlated, as you know, consumer and CEO confidence, um, stuff like that. In three areas, hostels, cross-border, and most importantly, the GDP outlook, we are in a, we're in a better situation than they were in 07 which raises the, one of the issues that concerns me is the macroeconomic outlook. Right. How sustainable is this? We are awash in liquidity. We know that. You can financing finance virtually is, anything is now, right? incredibly available. Yes. And so, but, you know, but then, I, then you see concerns about, is it too much stimulus on the one hand? Is tapering going to be a problem? How does all this play out if liquidity starts to dry up? And that is definitely a concern, but it's very different than the outlook in, you know, in the middle of 07 when we were all looking there, recognizing we were in for a tough go. Nobody realized how tough it was going to be, but it was a very different situation. So I worry about macro. The second piece I worry about is regulation. We clearly, I mean, I'll leave aside CFIUS and protectionism, but let's talk, I mean, antitrust is very topical. Listen, even today, Mark, we've been talking a great deal about this potential executive order from the president that will involve the rails, and right. there's a big deal, of course, underway there. Uh, and, it, you know, from, move out from there. I mean, Google getting sued by, uh, by more states uh, today about their app store. Uh, it would seem to have to be a key consideration. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Look, antitrust enforcement is going to be higher under, exi uh, under existing law. The question is, are we going to see changes? Is we going to see a basically the shift of burden, the burden of proof shifts on the buyer? That would be a major change, a much broader definition of anti-competitive behavior that doesn't go to consumer harm. These are the sorts of things, and, and I'm, I'm not going to take a position on the likelihood of legislation getting passed, but clearly we're in a much more... But what's the conversation like in a boardroom? Again, now listen, a lot of this activity that we're talking about is taking place at, I wouldn't call it a lower uh, overall dollar level, but two to five billion. I mean, the big deal, if you're a CEO thinking about a even not transformational, but just big dollar-wise, do you have to think long and hard about the, the regulatory response in a way that you might not have previously? Well, look, I, I'd say, I, I can't sit there and say that um, this is, is overwhelming. I do think, though, that if you're close to the line, however you want to define the line, that you've got to, in, in an environment like this, with increased enforcement uh, and potential legislation, you, you've got to be smart about this. You've got to think about it. And you've got to take it into, in, into account. We know time frames for getting these deals done that do get challenged are much longer. This administration may go to court more. So, yeah, it's a factor. But I think when you look at an economy that's as, as strong as this one looks like at this point, and leaving aside my, my macro concerns, it's sort of hard to fight the tape. People are transacting, and they're going to continue to transact you know, in the near to intermediate future, as far as we can see at this point. The other variable that I didn't mention is a possible concern is a, you know, some kind of an exogenous event. China, Russia, the Middle East, something along those lines that could put a shock into the marketplace. Those yeah. are the sorts of things that, that we look at. But right now, you know, boards are pretty sanguine and, con and CEO confidence is high. Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.